I said yesterday that the season should end at 23 games. There was no reason to keep playing. The Mariners were in first place. All was right with the world, but no, baseball had to adhere to their schedule and play more games today. The Mariners dropped this one five to one tonight to the Texas Rangers. They fall back into second place, uh, back to 500. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and break it all down for you guys with the Mariners post game recap. What is up? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back in. Listen, not a game that I'm going to lose too much sleep over. I, I didn't expect the Mariners to go into Texas and sweep them. You got a chance to win the series tomorrow. I could make this post game recap really quick. Kind of a game I'm willing to throw away. There were some frustrating things within the game. You know, I think every loss is going to have its frustrations. But you got Castillo going tomorrow against Andrew Haney, who has struggled. Texas is tough. The Mayors have had trouble in this ballpark. Certainly not an automatic win by any means. But you got a chance to win the series tomorrow and leave the stadium in first place. I will sign up for that. If you'd have told me, Jay, um, split series going into Thursday, you know, right there, not that, do you take it? Yeah, I, I'm signing up for that all, all day long. Um, chance to win the series tomorrow, see if they can get it done. First and foremost, before I really dive into this post game recap, do me a favor, hit that like button helps out the video tremendously. If you're new here, please hit subscribe. Thank you so much to all the new subs from yesterday's video. Got about 30 subs yesterday. Uh, now closing in on 3,100. So if very possible to get that tonight. If you're just lurking, like the videos, or if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button helps me out tremendously. Do have a couple channel plugs I'm going to do real quick, plus something cool I want to show you guys. If you want to skip it, you know, you can maybe move ahead two or three minutes here. If not, first plug is going to be for the SeatGeek promo code. If you're going to the Mariners game, maybe you live in another state and you're going to those baseball games, basketball playoffs, hockey, events, concerts, anything you can find on SeatGeek, download the app or go to the website. Use promo code JS Trident. It'll save you $20 off your next purchase. Next thing I'm going to plug a little bit is channel memberships. Reason I'm plugging is because Saturday is going to be the next members only live stream. Um, this one will not have a giveaway. Our last live stream did. Um, contest winner received a hat courtesy of Simply Seattle. They're not sponsoring the video, but they have great items there. Check them out. Um, and the membership, you know, the live streams, we do two of them a month. One will have a giveaway. One is just a hangout. Um, and they're a lot of fun because it's a one-on-one -on -one interaction. I kind of say it's like we're all sitting at the bar just watching the game together. So it's a lot of fun. Think about becoming a channel member. It's a chance to kind of have more one-on-one -on -one discussion too. So if you've got like a lot of questions for me, maybe maybe you don't, that's totally fine. But if you do, um, you know, it's a great chance to really get those questions in. I'm definitely going to see it in the member stream um, and I can go more in depth on those things as well. So think about becoming a channel member. Then the last thing I want to show you guys was a birthday gift from my amazing wife and my brothers that I've got to show you guys. We have got the old school Mariners here. Griffey autographed, authentic, got the certificate and everything with it. Cannot wait to get that framed and hung up in the background. Now I want to hear your guys' takes in the comments. I want to wear the jersey. Now, I know it should be framed. I I'm, I'm, know I'm in the wrong here. My wife was screaming at me when I suggested that I should wear it. And she's like, no, that has to be framed. And it's going to be. I, I know I'm wrong. But there's a part of me just wants to wear it. It's so cool. What do you guys think in the comments down below? Should that be something I wear or should that just be in the frame? It's going in the frame before anybody freaks out. I just had to get your guys' takes on it. Maybe if you all say wear it, I can convince her that I should wear it. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much to my amazing wife and my brothers for hooking that up for a um, for a birthday present for me. So that that is really cool. Had to share that with you guys. Okay, let's dive into the actual post-game recap. Like I said, you know, some frustrating things in this game. And it was, a, I think it was a winnable game for the Mariners. It was, it was there for them. And they're struggling to hit with runners in scoring position. You know, Bryce Miller's command control wasn't really there tonight. So not saying to just dismiss and who cares, but again, like I would have signed up, you know, the mayor's got a four run win. Texas gets a four run win rubber match tomorrow. You know, like I said, sign me up for that. I, I would have been totally fine. I thought this was going to be a tough game for the Mariners to get, you know, John Gray with that slider that he threw, I think 53 times side. I talked about that in the preview that Gray is going to throw a ton of sliders. Thought it was going to be a tough matchup for the Mariners. You also didn't have Cal Raleigh tonight, who missed the game with uh, the dental surgery. Hopefully, Cal's back in tomorrow. And then J.P. Crawford scratched with the oblique injury, which that one does concern me a little bit. Hopefully, it's just soreness. Um, 
and, and that and that's that's it. And he's able to get back in there. Probably good idea to give him tomorrow off. And Dylan Moore played well in his absence, so I don't know how much that actually hurt them tonight. But um, you know, that just made the task even tougher. Uh, to get this W tonight. So let's start with the pitching as we always do. Bryce Miller, four innings, four hits, two runs, two earned, four walks, five Ks. Miller was not sharp. Command control wasn't there. And on top of that, like I talked about last night, I, I don't know a team that spits on more pitches that are just, if it's not right down the middle or in the zone at all, the Rangers just spit on it. And that's a credit to them. I'm not saying that to be a diss or anything like that. But so the Rangers already, do a great job of that. And if you're not hitting your spots, it just compounds to make it a tough outing. Bryce battled, you know, gave up the two earned runs, the back-to-back -back home runs. The first one to Garcia, I thought Julio actually caught. I swear he had the ball in his glove when he brought it back in. Obviously he didn't. And then Evan Carter hits a cement mixer splitter out of the ballpark off Bryce Miller. He also walks four. Um, battled, you know, did a nice job to at least limit the damage. There was a lot of hard hit outs too. So I don't know how much of it was Bryce limiting the damage or the Rangers just getting some unlucky hits into outs, but whatever it is, he did hold them to two. Um, it gave the offense a chance and the offense struggled tonight, you know, to get back in the game, but not Bryce's most impressive outing, not worried at all. Like I said, Texas is a tough lineup. That's why I praised Logan yesterday, even though he had a few walks, like th th this Rangers team can just, th th they will spit on anything, not in the zone. And, you know, to Logan's credit, he got through six and two thirds last night to get the win. Bryce battled, but just couldn't quite get to that five innings, you know, or, or keep the Rangers off the board, um, unfortunately, but not worried about Bryce Moore. Still been impressed with the splitter this year. Um, he still looks really good. And th th there's going to be nights like that where you just don't have it. And and like I said, truthfully, four plus innings, two earned runs, you know, he kept them in the game. Uh, Taylor Saucedo came in, went an inning and a third. Thought Sauce did really well. Uh, got a nice double play to get um, Adolis Garcia to ground to a double play. Not easy to do to get the Mares out of the fifth. Kept, um, you know, kept gave the team a chance to get the bats back out there, um, you know, and try to get the lead. Tyson Miller came in. He gave up a couple hits. One of them to Wyatt Langford, I thought wasn't a terrible 0-2 pitch. Maybe a little too elevated. Langford is able to just kind of poke into right field. Jonah Himes somehow hits a slider that looked like it might bounce off the plate and gets it into right field for a double. Then Mitch Hanniger um, loses the ball on the throw and it kind of breaks the game open there. And the Rangers took a 4-1 lead, never looked back. Truth, they never looked back from a 2-1 lead, to be honest. Um, I, I know Sauce gets pegged with an earned run. Uh, Miller doesn't because of the Hanniger error. Miller still strikes out two in his two-thirds innings of work. I thought Miller was fine. I thought Sauce was fine. Um, the only one, maybe that 0-2 pitch to Langford was a little too elevated and just kind of on a platter there where Langford's able to serve it into right field. The Heim one, I, you tip your cap there. He just went down and got a slider. Austin Voth with two shutout innings in the ninth. There was another run scored there. Some sloppy play from the Mariners. You had Hanniger with the throw that, you know, goes back to throw like the bowling ball, loses it behind him. Um, in the, in the eighth, the Rangers hit into two double plays. One was bobbled by Dylan Moore and they couldn't turn it. The first one, the Mariners turned, but Austin Voth was called for impeding. I think it was Nathaniel Lowe's, um, ability to run the bases and he was called safe. Scott came out and argued it. Uh, initially I thought it was a terrible call on replay. I, I get it. Voth Lowe did kind of had his steps to the side there. Voth was kind of in the running lane. I, I don't think it was a terrible call. Honestly, and it doesn't matter anyways. I, the Rangers were going to win that game, but um, I didn't think it was awful. I mean, last week he had one where the first baseman for the Rockies clearly impeded time having his foot halfway on the bag. You know, so the consistency certainly is not there from the umps, but I, I didn't think it was a bad call. I did think that both probably, I think Lowe would have been out anyways, but, you know, we can't look at it like, well, he would have been out. You have to look, did he actually impede him, impede his, you know, running lane? And, and I think both did. So I thought that was a fair call. You know, listen, five walks, eight Ks, only three earned runs. You know, not the best night ever for the pitching staff, not the worst. Um, you know, a little bit better defense in the game probably ends three or four to one. You know, Miller not super sharp, but not the worst outing ever, was able to limit the damage. Sauce was solid. Miller gives up a couple hits. You know, both, you know, get some double play balls, but the Rangers end up getting a run for some errors for some errors, excuse me. I think I said errands. Um, so I don't really know how to break it down. I don't know. You know, kind of like a 
you had to give it a grade a C for the pitching performance tonight, I, I don't know, you know, not the worst ever enough if weren't for the defense to keep them in this game, but you know, it, it is what it is. Um, you know, Miller will be fine. I'm not worried about it. Like I said, tough Texas lineup and the pen did, did what they could for the most part. Let's move on to the lineup. Um, you know, again, they chase a starter before the fifth inning. They get John Gray out of there at four and two thirds, but what one for 10 with runners in scoring position, one for 11, something like that tonight. Talked about a little bit yesterday. Now it ended up not mattering, but you know, they had some opportunities to really blow that game open last night and, you know, Hanager grounds into a double play with the bases loaded. Julio strikes out with runners at the corners. You know, now Logan was good enough and the bullpen did their job last night that it didn't matter. But tonight, another night where they had chances. Like I said, they, I've been talking about this with this team. The offense has been much better the last couple weeks. Even tonight, like eight hits, two walks. They had some base runners out there. They had opportunities, but just didn't get the big hit. You know, didn't get that ball into the gap to score a couple runs with runners at the corners. You know, even even a sack flying a couple opportunities would help this team. But it, it's it's gotten better. Like early in the year, they weren't even getting the base runners. It was just awful, awful at bats. You know, now they're getting the base runners. They're having moments where they drive them in. Like I said, the offense has been much, much better the last couple of weeks. But then you have nights like tonight where just they they get the base runners, but just really, really, um, you know, have trouble bringing them in. Poor hitting with runners in scoring position. Mitch Hanniger really struggled tonight. Ty France had a rough game. Or actually, I mean, Ty had a rough at bat with some runners on. Um, I think Julio had one as well where he might have struck out with runners on. Yeah, he had the runner at third in the first inning. They ended up scoring the run, but Luke Rayleigh leaves a couple runners on. Sebi Zavala leaves some runners on. So just all in all, a, a really rough game for the offense, especially with runners in scoring position. Thought there was some decent plate appearance. Like I said, again, they, they chased a pretty good pitcher in John Gray um, out before the fifth inning was over. So, you know, they're doing, they're getting there. They're doing these things, but... Again, another game where I'd say they just needed that big hit to kind of finish it off and, and really knock Gray out, not just chase him necessarily, if that makes any sense. Josh Rojas, two for five, opened up the game with a triple, had a base hit. Uh, Rojas just continues to get the job done, might get the day off tomorrow. We'll see how healthy Urias is. We'll see if there are any roster moves that happen. Um, you know, Urias got hit on the wrist uh, Sunday in Colorado and stayed in the game for a little bit, then Rojas replaced him. And we haven't seen Urias since, but he hasn't gone on the injured list. Sometimes those things can happen retroactively because he hasn't played um, since Sunday. But, you know, at, at this point, you need as many healthy guys as you can with JP possibly being out again tomorrow. So if there's any doubt, you know, maybe put these guys on the IL, even JP, if you think he's going to miss, maybe you just think he's going to miss the next homestand or something. It's only a week. But if that's going to be the case, IL him and get Ryan Bliss up here, get some odd Taylor, whoever, whoever it is, Sam Haggerty, whoever you want to go with, because like tonight, you know, Klasse is the only guy you had on the bench available or, or Urias. But, you know, again, we haven't seen him since. So I'm not sure how healthy he even is right now with the wrist. So Mariners dealing with a few injuries. i um, not sure I got to that topic from Rojas. Oh, talking about maybe Rojas having the day off tomorrow, but Rojas just continues to deliver. I'd let him have some at bats against lefties. I think Rojas has earned the chance to, to do that. Um, I know they require acquired Urias for a reason and Urias has actually been fine overall at the bat, you know, tough, small sample hasn't had a ton of at bats, but um, I'm not against Rojas getting the start against the lefty tough day for Julio. Oh, for four, um, you know, after a really encouraging game yesterday with his first home run of the year, where's the O for Polanco one for three with a walk um, base hit, put runners on the corners in the fifth inning really felt like the Mariners opportunity um, that's when they're trying to knock John Gray out of the game, had a chance to get a couple runs there. And we'll talk about what happened in a minute. You know, listen, Polanco still hasn't really broken out, out, but a hit and a walk four at bats on base twice. Not going to complain about that. Uh, Mitch Hanniger one for four did have a double, which was good to see off the wall, had the RBI in the first innings, not the world's most impressive RBI, but you know, listen, I, I don't really care how the sausage is made. If you can score the runs, score the runs. You know, it's sort of like big picture. I care how they're scored little picture. Just looking at this game in a vacuum, I could care less if you score in 17 wild pitches and 14 sack flies, just get runs in, um, you know, but not strong contact or anything from Hanager on that RBI. He also with runners at the corners in the fifth inning struck out on a three, two pitch from gray. That wasn't even close. Mitch is slumping a little bit. You know, it was good to see the double. 
Um, you know, tough. I don't know if you sit him against a lefty tomorrow because you'd like to have his bat against Andrew Haney, but I, I don't know. May may give him a day off. Problem is, you know, you give Mitch Haniger the day off, and you're already short. Maybe JP Crawford. You know, do you play Rayleigh against a lefty? You could. I mean, that's fine, but I, I think you got to have Mitch Haniger probably in there against a left-handed hitter tomorrow. Um, if it was a righty, I'd for sure give him the day off, but. I think it's a lefty. You kind of need him in there. We'll talk about the other guy here in a second that would uh, maybe also need to go to the bench for a little bit. But um, n- next up, Ty France, two for four. A couple solid line drives for Ty. I was actually planning on pulling up his Savant page for this post game recap because Ty has had a really bizarre year. Like the numbers aren't great. He came in tonight slugging like 311 or something like that. OPS is now up to 645. So just the surface level numbers are pretty meh. If you go look at the Savant page, I mean, he's crushing. He's had everything on the sweet spot, you know, barreling stuff up. It's really encouraging. What's the truth? You know, listen, I'm, I'm a firm believer in Savant. I, you know, there's no bias in those numbers, that data. Like we have inherent biases. We're fans. We watch the game with our eyes. And that doesn't mean that, you know, we're wrong or anything like that, but the, the, the data is not lying. It's telling you Ty France is hitting the ball hard. He's barreling things up. He's squaring things up. Uh, but my eye test tells me that, yeah, it, it does look like he's hit a, making harder contact this year. Um, I still haven't been super impressed. I, I really don't know what to make of Ty France. Um, like I said, the, the, the data would tell you that he's going to be fine, but I also just, I don't know, you know, and, I, I think stuff like Savant and those pages are great tools. I think you definitely use them. I do. But I also don't think they're the end-all be-all. And at some point, you do have to produce. So hopefully that data will end up, you know, the sweet spot, the barrel rate, all, all that hard hit data will end up leading to better numbers for Ty. That's my hope. Um, and again, like right now, there's guys hitting a lot worse than Ty France in this lineup too. So not something I'm going to be super up in arms about right now, but you know, if we get to June, mid-June, and Ty's still kind of doing this, uh, we're going to have a talk about, you know, Tyler Locklear, see how Luke Rayleigh's doing, if he needs to play some first. We'll, we'll start getting into that. Um, like I said, I think June is when I'll really start going, okay, like, you know, the, the, the batter ball profile looks good, but when is it going to translate? So hopefully it does. Uh, n- not a bad game for Ty. Unfortunately, had runners at second and third in the fifth inning and, and couldn't couldn't bring home the runs. If he would have gotten the hit there, it actually been a really nice game for Ty. Um, but, but still the two hits is solid. Not, not wrong with that. They're both hit. Well, Luke Rayleigh, Oh, for four, uh, Mitch Garver, Oh, for four. Listen, I, I said at the beginning of the year, like, when do I start to analyze players and look at things? I, I say, I give it about a month and, you know, sometimes more, sometimes less. It just, it just depends on the player, how they look like, listen, Ty's been frustrating Ty France, but you, you can see it, right? Like he is hitting the ball a little harder. I do think that's fair. Um, and it wouldn't shock me if Ty's numbers start going up. Mitch Garver looks really bad. And I, he had actually had a couple hits today that were hit pretty hard, but on the ground, one of them was lifted a little bit, but off the end of the bat, I don't even know how hard it was actually hit. Mitch, Mitch Garver's got to start hitting like, uh, you know, everything about the profile would tell you he's going to eventually. And, you know, I, I, I believe in the data. I believe in the numbers, but uh, I'm ready for it to start happening. I thought he was turning it around. He got that home run in the red series. Thought maybe we we're seeing it come alive. And then it's just back to nothing in this road trip. Um, you know, a couple walks here and there, which is great. That's fine. I'm keep walking. We can walk all day and score runs, but man, I want to see Garver barrel up some pitches here and put something in the gap and over the fence. It's just, it's been really, really frustrating. I, I don't know what the option is. I mean, it's not like Luke Rayleigh's killing it. You put him at DH. You don't really want Jonathan Klasse DHing. I mean, you could put Rayleigh at first and tie DHing. You know, but again, like you know, DH Haniger, Klasse, and right Rayleigh. And left. I mean, you, you can do a lot of things, but I mean, you sign Mitch Garver to a two-year deal. You, you, you're gonna need him to get going at some point. Um, I, I don't think you bench him yet. Um, I, I'm not at that point because I think you do need Mitch Garver to do something for you to, to, to be the, the team we hope this team can be certainly can't have a five Oh seven OPS that, that will not get it done uh, for this team. So we'll see what happens. You know, again, we're still early enough that a, a four for four, a five for five game, and those numbers are going to skyrocket up. 
but I am starting to get a little bit like a little cautiously nervous. Is that a word? Is that a term about, about Mitch Garver? Uh, Dylan Moore, two for three and a walk Demo on base three times, stole a base. Uh, the ultimate Swiss army knife for the Mariners continues to produce and have a really, really solid season. Would be shocked. if We see him again at shortstop tomorrow. Zaval 0 for 3 after his uh, MVP game in Colorado on Sunday. Uh, the AL MVP frontrunner, Sebi Zavala, back to looking pretty helpless at the plate. That's another position that I do wonder, you know, if we get to kind of the all-star break or maybe even earlier. Um, I know you got Blake Hunt down there in Tacoma and some options, but I do wonder if we see the Mariners trade for a backup catcher at some point. I honestly, dead serious. If something the Giants slip up a little bit, I wonder if they'd be willing to trade Tom Murphy back to the mayor. I know Murphy's off to a slow start, but Murphy's track record is much better uh, than Zavala's. And Classe pinched hit and struck out. Um, I don't think we'll see Classe in there tomorrow against the lefties. So Classe is not going to start um, any of the games in the series, which I, I, I get. I get getting Luke Rayleigh some at bats. Um, but if you're not going to play Classe, you probably need to send him down. I mean, if he's going to play sparingly, I'd rather have Cade Marlowe or someone like that taking that spot. You know what I mean? Like, and I get it. I, I, you know, I'd be playing Luke Rayleigh more too, trying to get him, his bat going and started. And while Colossae's had some flashes, I mean, 559 OPS, certainly much limited sample size. I'm not judging him based on the 15 at bats he's had. And he's had some nice moments and, and shown, I, I think he's shown that he can hand, you know, play at the big league level so far, but still overall just, you know, not great either, if, if that makes sense. I think uh, I think on Locked On Mariners they were talking about, and Colby and Ty made a good point. Like the, he's had some important moments, but the overall body of work hasn't been great for Klaus. I think that's kind of they're saying that, that that makes a lot of sense. Again, not a loss. I'm going to lose sleep over. You know, Mariners won by four yesterday, lose by four today. Win tomorrow, win a series. Early game tomorrow, so I won't have the post game recap up till I'm home from work. I'll have to listen to it on the radio, hopefully. Um, let's see, get, get the series win, get back first place over 500 and then back home for a home stand against the D backs and the Braves, you know, nothing more to it. Weren't going to, didn't think they were going to go into Texas and sweep the Rangers. Mayors are still playing good ball overall. Um, you know, this is a tough nine game stretch, Texas, Arizona, Atlanta. I said, if you go five and four, I would sign up for that right away. You're one and one in that stretch. So anybody that's super frustrated with this loss, again, there was frustrating things within this loss. But just the loss as a whole, you know, it, it happens. The Mariners weren't going to go 151 and 11. And hopefully they win tomorrow. Get back in first place and get ready for another homestand. Have a great night, everybody. Remember to hit that like button, hit subscribe, use the promo code, and think about becoming a channel member. If you have any questions about that, just let me know. I'd be happy to answer them. Have a great night, everybody. Enjoy your Wednesday and go Mariners. Peace.